Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Bend County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 91. This is the Friday, March 11th, 2022 edition of Library Connections. Kicking things off with the top five fiction bestsellers for this week from the New York Times. At number one, Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. Hannah Bellinger begins to fall for her roommate, who is a fisherman and a notorious ladies' man. At number two, it ends with us by Colleen Hoover. A battered wife, raised in a violent home, attempts to halt the cycle of abuse. At number three, The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. Jess has suspicions about her half-brother's neighbors when he goes missing. At number four, Verity by Colleen Hoover. Lowen Ashley is hired by the husband of an injured writer to complete her popular series, and she uncovers a horrifying truth. And at number five, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. A movie icon recounts stories of her loves and career to a struggling magazine writer. And moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for this week, at number one, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How trauma affects the body and mind and innovative treatments for recovery. At number two, Red Handed by Peter Schweitzer. The author of Profiles in Corruption portrays a conspiracy of how the Chinese government might infiltrate American institutions. At number three, Comedy, 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 Drama by Bob Odenkirk. The actor and writer, known for his work in sketch comedy and dramatic roles charts his path. At number four, The 1619 Project, edited by Nicole Hannah-Jones, Caitlin Roper, Elena Silverman, and Jake Silverstein. Viewing America's entanglement with slavery and its legacy in essays adapted and expanded from the New York Times Magazine. And at number five, The Beauty of Dusk by Frank Bruni. A New York Times columnist describes his medical journey and shifting priorities after a rare stroke affects his vision. Our first recommended read for this week is a historical mystery. It's called The Blood Covenant by Chris Nixon. Leeds, England, 1822. Thief taker Simon Westo finds stolen items, in return for which his customers pay him handsomely. But he also rights wrongs and tries to keep his city free from crime and corruption. When his good friend Davy Ashton is accused of sedition and jailed, Simon can't believe it. Davy is sometimes outspoken in his views, but a seditionist? Never. As Simon tries to free his friend, he hears rumors that a government spy is behind Davy's imprisonment, as well as that of others, also falsely accused of sedition. Then, Simon's friend George Erickson 
asked for help in finding a valuable ring that was stolen by a girl who hocused him by spiking his drink. As Simon and his assistant Jane investigate, the two cases begin to converge into a dark plot that threatens not only Simon and Jane, but also Simon's wife and their two little boys. Nixon's latest combines multiple twists, vivid descriptions of life in the early 19th century, strong characters, and a surprising ending. A perfect read-alike for David Liss's popular series starring another British thief-taker, Benjamin Weaver. And that's the bookless review of the title. And on a reader's note, if you'd like to start reading the Benjamin Weaver series from book one, you should check out A Conspiracy of Paper. Our second recommended read for this week is the new novel, The Family Chow, by Lan Samantha Chang. An acclaimed storyteller returns with a gorgeous and gripping literary mystery that explores family, betrayal, passion, race, culture, and the American dream. The residents of Haven, Wisconsin have dined on the fine Chow restaurant's delicious Americanized Chinese food for 35 years, content to ignore any unsavory whispers about the family's owners. Whether or not Big Leo Chow is honest, or his wife Winnie is happy, their food tastes good, and their three sons earn scholarships to respectable colleges. But when the brothers reunite in Haven, the Chow family's secrets and simmering resentments erupt at last. Before long, brash, charismatic, and tyrannical patriarch Leo is found dead, presumed murdered, and his sons find that they've drawn the exacting gaze of the entire town. The ensuing trial brings to light potential motives for all three brothers, Doug, the restaurant's reckless head chef, Ming, financially successful but personally tortured, and the youngest, gentle but lost college student, James. As the spotlight on the brothers tightens and the family dog meets an unexpected fate, Doug, Ming, and James must reckon with the legacy of their father's outsized appetites and their own future survival. Brimming with heartbreak, comedy, and suspense, the family Chow offers a kaleidoscopic, highly entertaining portrait of a Chinese-American family grappling with the dark undercurrents of a seemingly pleasant small town. And that's our second recommended read of the week, and that one's definitely on my reading list, although I hope that the unexpected fate of the dog is a positive one. But I'm digressing. So moving along, our first audiobook recommendation for this week is one that is a prime librarian recommendation. So you'll forgive me if you raise your eyebrows and go, oh my goodness, I'm not sure I want to hear about that. But it's called Index, A History of the a bookish adventure from medieval manuscripts to the digital age by Dennis Duncan. The audiobook is narrated by Neil Gardner. Most of us give little thought to the back of the book. It's just where you go to look things up. But as Dennis Duncan reveals in this delightful and witty history, Hiding in plain sight is an unlikely realm of ambition and obsession, sparring and politicking, pleasure and play. In the pages of the index, we might find butchers to be avoided, or cows that excrete fire, or even 
catch Calvin in his chamber with a known. Here, for the first time, is the secret world of the Index, an unsung but extraordinary everyday tool with an illustrious but little-known past. Charting its curious path from the monasteries and universities of 13th century Europe to Silicon Valley in the 21st, Duncan uncovers how it has saved heretics from the stake, kept politicians from high office, and made us all into the readers we are today. We follow it through German print shops and Enlightenment coffee houses, novelist living rooms, and university laboratories, encountering emperors and popes, philosophers and prime ministers, poets, librarians, and of course, indexers along the way, revealing its vast role in our evolving literary and intellectual culture Duncan shows that for all our anxieties about the age of search, aka the age of the internet, we are all index rakers at heart, and we have been for 800 years. So if you like a little bit of history and books about books, check out Index. Moving on to our second audiobook recommendation for this week, and this one's a mystery. It's called Thunder Road by Colin Holmes. The audiobook is read by Grover Gardner. In 1947, former soldier Jeff Sharp, the hero of Holmes's intriguing debut, loses his job as a special ranger for the Fort Worth and Western Stockmen's Association in Fort Worth, Texas. At a gambling house owned by mob-connected Doyle Deneker, Sharp runs into Jerry Cartwright, an army major who saved his life during World War II. After Deneker offers Sharp a job investigating a real estate mogul, one thing leads to another, and he becomes a fully-fledged P.I. When Cartwright, who was in debt to Deneker, disappears, Deneker hires Sharp to locate Cartwright, and suddenly, Sharp finds people were trying to kill him, and nobody bothered to tell him why. Sharp's search takes him to Las Vegas, Nevada, and Roswell, New Mexico, where mysterious lights appear in the sky. Along the way, he encounters such real-life notables as mob accountant Meyer Lansky, business magnate Howard Hughes, Congressman Lyndon Johnson, and comedian Jack Benny. Crisp, clear prose makes the naughty plot easy to follow as it morphs from a Western into a detective story with an overlay of conspiracy theories. The genre shifting may put off some readers the most will be curious to see what Holmes does next. And that is the Publisher's Weekly Review. And of course, that's the first book in the series. Our first streaming recommendation for this week is the 2020 film Beans, directed by Tracy Deer and starring GM Guido, Viola Bowe, and Rainbow Dickerson. You can stream this one from Hulu. The gist of the plot is this. A 12-year-old girl, nicknamed Beans, has big dreams. She wants to get into Queen's Height Academy and learn to be a great artist. Though she tells her interviewer that she'd like to be a doctor or a lawyer someday. While she plans her future, the world around her begins to change rapidly. The Mohawk people are in a standoff with the predominantly white government of Oka, Quebec, who want to put a golf course and townhouses on Mohawk burial grounds. The conflict becomes violent 
before Bean's very eyes, making the whole thing extremely real after she witnesses a raid at the protest site with her pregnant mother Lily and little sister Ruby. As Beans comes of age, she also begins to see the way the world can be hateful. They refuse service at the grocery store, ambushed by people as they try to get back home, called slurs and spit at. She does her best to learn how to toughen up with the help of an older girl named April who gives her tough love and reality checks. With the help of archival news footage, we get a feel for just how horrific the situation truly is and how it changes the way beans will move through the world forever. And that's the Decider Review. Our second streaming recommendation for this week is much lighter in tone than the first one. This is actually a romance comedy. It's called I Want You Back. It's directed by Jason Orley and stars Isaac Aptaker and Elizabeth Berger. It's an Amazon original movie. If you're in the mood for a charming rom-com, you're going to absolutely love I Want You Back. Starring the cinematic dream team of Charlie Day and Jenny Slate, the winsome comedy follows two recently dumped 30-somethings who team up to sabotage their ex's new relationships in an attempt to win them back. Also starring Gina Rodriguez, Manny Jinkto, and Scott Eastwood, the engaging film is a sweet, authentic look at modern dating. You'll have a blast. Trust me. Stream it today on Prime Video. And that's the Decider Review. And I'll admit that in this last week I found shorter reviews on the Decider website, uh, thus citing the Decider for several of our streaming picks this week. But if you're looking for a fun rom-com, I think I Want You Back will fit the bill. And our third and final streaming recommendation for this week is the new docuseries Lincoln's Dilemma. Starring Jeff McNeil as the narrator, Jeffrey Wright as Abraham Lincoln, or the voice of Abraham Lincoln, and Leslie Odom Jr. as the voice of Frederick Douglass. You can stream this one from Apple TV+. Plus. There's four episodes, and of course, disclaimer here, Linda the Librarian is a huge history fan. I was a history major in school before I went out and got my library degree, so this is definitely historical. So if you like history... Let me tell you a little more about it, and then you can check it out. The new documentary series, Lincoln's Dilemma, begins and ends outside of Abraham Lincoln's era, opening with footage of the siege on the Capitol on January 6, 2021, and concluding only weeks later with the journalist Jelani Cobb's observation that the military occupied Washington to keep Joe Biden safe at his inauguration. But the point this series makes is that indeed, we are hardly outside of Lincoln's moment at all, that the tenuousness and the peril of his era persist, as does the fundamentally unresolved question of race in this country. Directed by Jacqueline Olive and Barack Goodman, an executive produced by, among others, former HBO chief Richard Plepler, Lincoln's Dilemma uses various techniques to illustrate the life and legacy of the 16th president and the problems he faced while in office. Among these are readings of Lincoln's and Frederick Douglass's words, narration, and the introduction of various historians. Episode 1 opens with a bang, showing footage from the January 6 insurrection of supporters of former President Donald Trump storming the U.S. Capitol to wave Confederate flags inside Union Halls, a sorry scene that Lincoln gave his life to prevent. 
The film insists that Republicans and Democrats have switched parties, inviting viewers to look in the mirror. Episode 2 is called So You See, The Man Moves, describing Lincoln's pivot towards making emancipation part of the official war mission. The Civil War was always about slavery. Apologists for the antebellum South can claim states' rights, but the reason states wanted autonomy was to maintain a way of life with the big business of slavery. Episode 3, A New Birth of Freedom, grapples with Lincoln's nickname as the Great Emancipator, starting with present-day footage of protests at the Emancipation Memorial on Capitol Hill. It juxtaposes why certain statues are taken down, for example, a slave bowing beneath a white savior, while others, like the Lincoln Memorial, remain standing. The Lincoln Memorial, of course, being a symbol of a transformative leader preserving the Union. And the fourth and final episode is titled A Sacred Effort, which was Douglas's review of Lincoln's second inaugural address, which ran in part, With malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right, let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds. This episode is the most inspiring and the most tragic. On the one hand, we see Lincoln succeed in winning the Civil War, thanks to Sherman's march, and convincing Congress to pass the 13th Amendment to abolish slavery. In one of the docuseries' most touching scenes, we see Lincoln ride a humble barge down a river and disembark on the shores of Virginia to greet former slaves to announce they are free. On the other hand, we see Lincoln assassinated at Ford's Theater in April 1865, followed by an extended funeral train ride across the country for thousands of mourning Americans before being laid to rest back in his home state of Illinois. Tragically, he's replaced in the White House by his Vice President Andrew Johnson, a staunch Southern sympathizer. Thus, the series ends with the failures of Reconstruction, the rise of the KKK, the violence of 1919, and the implementation of Jim Crow segregation. A dangerous revisionist history begins with the southern states building statues of Jefferson Davis, Stonewall Jackson, and Robert E. Lee, and flying Confederate flags over state capitals to intimidate black voters. It would be another hundred years before Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., stood on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial for his I Have a Dream speech, he too being assassinated in 1968. The series ends with footage of the Lincoln Memorial in the context of today's heated politics. There's an inclination to seek out Lincoln in trying times, a historian says. We've seen the accusations of elections that are not representative, and all these dynamics that are extremely dangerous in a democracy. In that moment, you think of the first president tasked with navigating that type of a situation in the crucible of major conflict, and that's Lincoln. Jason Frawley of White Top News gave this docuseries five stars, and Linda the Librarian agrees. If you like history, check out Lincoln's Dilemma. And finally, our Hoopla recommendation for this week is season one of the mystery series, White Stable Pearl. With her son grown, single mom Pearl pursues her lifelong dream and starts a private detective agency, which she runs from her family seafood restaurant 
in the coastal town of Whitestable. Drawn by her caring but no-nonsense nature, residents flock to her with all kinds of cases. But when she discovers her friend and oyster supplier dead, DCI Mike McGuire arrives from London to lead the investigation. Gruff and aloof, Mike initially clashes with Pearl, but they soon find themselves working together to solve everything from murders to boat sabotage to mysterious packages left by anonymous benefactors. Filmed on location in seaside Whitestable, England, this mystery series is based on the books by Julie Wasmer, and the series shines with wit and intrigue. And having mentioned the books, I thought I should note on a reader's note that the first book in the Julie Wasmer series is called The Whitestable Pearl Mystery, should you wish to compliment watching the series with reading the books. If you have questions about this weekly video cast, let me know. You can send an email to me at rhymerl at stls.org and I'll get back to you. Again, that's r-e-i-m-e-r-l at s-t-l-s dot org. Library hours are as follows. We're open Mondays through Fridays from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., and we're closed on Sundays. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great week.